Welcome to Hand of Fate. This is a very interesting game made by Defiant Development. It takes elements from deck builders and action RPGs and kind of just puts them all together. The end result is something that has a lot of randomization and a lot of chance, but also a lot of skill. And frankly, it's really damn good. I'm not coming into this blind as I do with most games. I actually saw quite a few hours of a playthrough of this when it was still in early access. And now that it's come out of early access, it's fully released, it's much improved, and I'm ready to play it. So if you'd like to play this for yourself, you can grab it from a bunch of different places, and I'll have links to all of that in the description. Let's begin. Ah, one more for the game. Come, Sid. You have passed the 13 gates. And you come to my table to play the game of life and death. Your stake is wagered. I refuse none who come here. Yet, I say, turn back. game begins. One lives and one dies. Let us see what you are made of. Here is the first member of my court, the Jack of Dust. Twelve in all must fall before you may challenge me. So this is the first boss that I'm going to have to fight to finish this dungeon. I'm going to skip this text for now because I believe we get to read it again when we actually encounter him. Let the cards fall where they may. We begin. Let's go ahead and move to the first randomized card. Twisted Canyon. That first moment, that glinting weapon, the call to action, to adventure. Truly, there is nothing like it. This is actually one of my favorite early encounters because it's really easy to get good equipment from it. So long as you play your cards right, literally. You see a weapon glinting in the sunlight, lying next to a skeleton at the bottom of the canyon. The walls of the canyon are covered in thick vines, perfect for climbing. You can either climb down or leave it. Of course we're going to climb down. Just got to pick the right one. All right, got to track the top card. Let's see. Choose from these options. All right, so this is a fun little mini game because it involves randomization, but also skill. You can actually track the cards. It's really hard to track the cards that are actually underneath the top one. But the very, very top one you can track pretty easily. And I did exactly that. And the top one was actually the failure card. So this one all the way on the left was the top card, and it should be the failure card, so any one of these other three should be fine. Bingo! Very carefully, you make your way to the bottom of the canyon. Draw a weapon card. Let's see what we get. Axe does 25 damage compared to my current rusty axe, which does 20. Let's go ahead and equip that. A moment to savor. That will make you much more effective. So yeah, we can just move to any one of these adjacent cards that are turned down. Don't know what's beneath them since we haven't actually visited them yet. Let's just pick one and go. Mr. Lionel. I was never a fan of illusion or pretense. Here, I'll make an exception. Whilst enjoying your evening meal at the local tavern, a strange old man takes the seat next to yours. He taps your shoulder quite painfully with his wooden staff to get your attention. And you notice that he appears to be a goblin, poorly disguised as a human. <laughs> yeah, judging by that picture, that is a very bad disguise. He's, he's even got a mustache. His wizened face grins at you with a hint of madness. My name is Mr. Lionel. If you give me what I need, boy, I will conjure up your heart's desire with this wizarding wand of my own creation. 
He cackles uncontrollably for a few moments, then sits patiently waiting for your answer. Let's ask him what he needs. Need? I need to help you. Mr. Lionel taps his staff on the ground and his shield materializes at your feet. There you go, old bean. He smiles a warm grin that reveals all his chipped and yellowed teeth. Your face reminds me of my son. I haven't met you before, have I? I don't think so. I cannot expect you to get by without some protection. Alright, so we just got a shield. I'm going to skip this tutorial stuff since I already know how to play. But basically it's saying that the shield can be used to reflect projectiles and use counterattacks. You can now reflect your opponent's ranged attacks using your shield. Make good use of this skill if you wish to survive. Then, before you can stop him, with inhuman speed, he snatches a pickled onion off your plate and sprints out the tavern door. Goodbye, Mr. Lionel. Hell, I can't really complain. I think a pickled onion is worth an entire shield. It's a pretty good deal. Fair Merith. I'm not surprised to find that this encounter remains vivid in your memories. One day in a shitty forest, you encounter an elf maiden. She stops to greet you. I am Merith of the Forest Folk. My people have long helped the mortals of this realm. What boon would you ask of me? Alright, so as you can see in the bottom left, my health is fine. I have seven food and zero gold. So food is consumed every time that you make a move. So if you move to another card, it consumes one food. And if you run out of food, I think you either die or start to lose health really rapidly with every move. I can't remember which. I think you just lose health. But regardless, you really don't want to run out of food. So I'm going to go ahead and ask for supplies. This bread will sustain you for many days. Two food gain cards. Three I'm food? sure you are grateful for that. Mm-hmm. And free food. Okay, rolled kind of low with those. I've actually gotten a food a food gain card that gave me ten food once. So they can go a lot higher than three. But still, I won't complain. Many enchanted weapons have powerful abilities that can turn the tide to battle, but only if their wielder remembers to use them. Farewell, mortal. Bound once more, seeking the heart of it all. Let's go to the next level. Your journey is well begun. This is what I was looking for. You show some aptitude for the game. Perhaps this will not be as boring as I thought. Okay, so I can do some trading at the Traveling Mage, but unfortunately I have no gold. So there's really no point. I'm just going to pass it by. An ambush. Hardly fair, is it? Suddenly, a tree falls across your path, blocking the way ahead. One monster card. Weapons bristle from the trees around you, their wielders' faces obscured by the undergrowth. Give us all your gold, or die. <laughs> Let's attack the cowardly band for daring to threaten me. You shout a battle cry and raise your weapon. You can now counter your opponent's attacks. Hit the counter button when you see the flashing indicator. Okay, so I'm just going to skip this again because I already know how to play. But it's it's a fairly basic combat system. It's simple but satisfying is how I would describe it. Uh, basically, you can just do a normal attack. You can do a stun attack. You can do counters. And you can just do a roll. And that's pretty much it, really. It's pretty fun, though.
did it without losing a single hit point. Search the bodies and got three gain cards. Ooh. A sword. The most fundamental symbol of might for an age. Let's see. Oh, I don't actually want it though. It does 23 damage and my current axe does 25. Yep, I'm just gonna leave it unequipped. Maybe uh, sell it to a shop. Really? Is that what you're going to do? Oh, there's the 10 food card. Nice. Oh, that was good. You quick. have reached my first champion. A good man, driven to madness by a war that took all from him. Wife and child, kith and kin. From such dark and brittle iron, I forge my tools. Now we see your metal. The bandit leader is stronger and faster than most bandits encountered. He can become enraged, making powerful, unblockable attacks. He also inspires his followers to steal gold on each hit. In the ruins of an ancient temple, among the eternally shifting sand dunes, lives the mysterious leader of the desert bandits. Infamous for his reign of terror over any spice caravans that, that dare take their chances traveling through his domain, he rules as a king over the barren lands. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. Let's do it. I'm ready. These early encounters are actually quite easy. Some enemy attacks cannot be blocked or countered. Get out of the way or stop them with your own counter attack. So that's what that red mark means, by the way. That means I can't counter it. into the worms with him. Perhaps there is peace for him in the grave, poor soul. One champion has been sent to the cabinet. Yet we are only at the start of our road. You will face 11 more opponents who will test your strength, your memories, and your resolve. Few fall at the first hurdle. None reach the last. We have wagered, and you have won. You may claim your rewards, yet I will also claim mine. As you improve, so do I. Balance must be retained. So one of the cool things about this game is that by defeating the various challenges, both in terms of just going to certain cards and beating those challenges and also just beating the end bosses, you unlock new cards that you then can put into your deck which you then encounter, because the cards are the encounters that you actually come across. So your encounters are constantly changing to some degree, because you get new cards and you can shuffle your deck and do all sorts of stuff with it. So it's, it's semi-randomized, but semi-controlled, because you choose what cards to put in your deck, but at the same time there's a lot of randomization in it. So it's really cool. It's a nice system.
Bunch of equipment. And some new challenges. Shall we deal again? Ah, good. Now you understand the basics, we can begin in earnest. Your hero is returned to his beginning items. Our decks are reset. Welcome to the cabinet, home of the members of my court. Why, thank you. All right, let's go with story mode, of course. I love that cabinet, it's so cool. So this is the next boss to tackle, the Jack of Skulls. Time for you to face my undead army. Meet the Jack of Skulls. All right, now before we can actually start the game, we have to change our deck a bit. Wants to use the recommended stuff, but let's not do that. Let's uh, get familiar with how this works. So I need to add some more cards to my deck. So as you can see back here, I need two more for equipment. So the cards down here are cards that I currently have in my deck, and the ones up here are new ones. Or at least, maybe, in some cases, like this axe and the sword, they're old cards that I used to have, but I just never actually put them in my deck. So these are the unused cards. So I need two more, and I think I want to get rid of some of the old ones as well, just to change things up. So the swords seem to do less damage than the axes, so I'm actually going to ditch the swords. Let's throw in this mace, throw in another axe, some of this new armor. Yeah, seems good. Now, as for encounters. Now, I barely actually got to any of these encounters in the game. I got a winding trail, Dead Man's Gorge. Um, let's saw some Devil's Choice, that seems cool. Maybe toss out Ambush for Dead King's Hall? No idea what these encounters really are exactly, but just throw some new stuff in there. Seems good. And we are good. I will add my own cards to the deck. How boring life would be without a little spice. Play for life and death. Prepare yourself. I always thought it was best to avoid the problems of others. I see you have no such concerns. You hear a shout from up ahead in the sounds of battle. Racing forwards, you discover a warrior surrounded by undead. Okay, yeah, so this is a challenge, which, as you can see with that little floating thing in the air that he just put up there, if I defeat this challenge, then I'm going to end up with new cards at the end of this. So this will actually unlock new stuff. Broken bones litter the area around the man, but there are still more closing in on him, and he appears badly injured. Stranger, he calls out, as he throws his weapon to you. Here, take my mace, and put an end to these monstrosities. Why, thank you. It's a lump oh. of iron on a stick. Not terribly subtle. <laughs> I accidentally skipped that little pop-up. But I was just talking about holy weapons. So, because this is a holy weapon, it actually does more damage to the enemies that I'm about to face. The undead. Yeah, 27 damage. Way better than my rusty axe, which does 20 damage. Let's go ahead and equip it. Let's put these skulls back in the ground where they came from. Oh right, I don't have a shield, that's why I can't counterattack. I'm like, why, why can't I counter? I have no shield. Okay. You're gonna have to be careful here. Oh no!
good work putting them to rest. Keep the maze. We have enough back at Kaber, he says, slowly standing. We've been hearing reports of undead in our kingdom recently, and I came to investigate. He stops to look around at all the bone fragments. More of them here than I suspected. Some new horror must have decided to settle in these parts and brought its minions. I must head back to the Citadel and report this to the Duke. Watch your step, friend. There's something more more powerful at work than just these skeletons. This card's token is now yours. The token is yours. Well done. It lives in every game. That initial moment where things begin. I have worked on these cards all my days, and the canyon has been there from the outset. Hmm, whatever weapon I find, I don't think it could really be better than the current, the, the mace that I have right now. What I really need is a shield. Alright, track the top card, track the top card. Once again, that's the failure card, which is right here, so any one of these others should be fine. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that. <laughs> Mr. Lionel again. I'm starting to wonder if you're simply leaving this card in as a quick way to get your hands on a shield. Oh, I would never do that. That's exactly why it's still in. I need that shield. Give it to me. Ask him what he needs. Do, do, do. Thank you. You can have my... A strong left arm is as important as a strong right arm, after all. You can have my pickled onion, Mr. Lionel. Every step you take consumes food, but you will also heal as you proceed. Indeed, yes, yeah, so every step takes up one food, but you heal five hit points. Many have reached this far. Further, in fact. I do not know if you have what it takes to do better than they did. Ooh, a cave, traps, and the hope of treasure. It's all I could ask for, and more. This is a fun one. You found a goblin treasure cave. Will you enter? Of course! What could go wrong? Now we begin to raise the stakes. The arena itself will fight against you. Beware of my traps. Oh no! There goes ten hit points. Not bad. Three game guards. A little extra health, but it is only a momentary respite. Okay, got uh, enough money to maybe visit the shops. Probably buy a helmet or something. Oh, you know what? I actually need Given food. Given how rarely one encounters the folk, you are fortunate indeed to meet Merith again. Or perhaps we are merely cycling around the wheel and dipping into the same memories time and time again. God, I hope not. Stuck in some purgatory of endlessly playing this game? Playing for my life? Anyway, let's ask for supplies, since I'm very low on food. One of my cards. A small benefit. I will not be so graceful for long. Ah, oh, perfect. 
Let's go ahead and spend our newly found money. In a shady grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Greetings, wise traveler. I have much to offer you. If you were wondering why you've been collecting all that gold, you now have your answer. We're starting to get into the meat of the game now. The back and forth between resources and rewards. Let's go ahead and sell the axe that I'm not using anymore. A peasant's weapon, but effective nonetheless. Okay, let's see, what can we afford? Well, I already have the shield, can't afford that, so it's going to be either the healing cap or the explorer's helmet. Let's see, reveals a stairs encountered upon... Uh, reveals a stair encounter upon entering a level and grants a gold bonus for revealing every encounter on a level. Any healing that the player receives is doubled. Um, I'm going to go for the explorer's helmet. Yeah, that sounds good. A small aid to navigation, but still... Yep, there's my gold bonus. Head downwards, if you dare. There's my helmet at work. What brings you to play the game? Ha, I know you will not tell me. Like all the rest, you are silent. Ooh, that's one of the new ones that I, I put in. I like this demon. He lies as often as he tells the truth. There's a token in it for you if you win. A cloaked devil appears in your path. I'm here to test your strength, so-called hero. Choose your foe. Hmm? I get to choose my own foe, huh? I feel like this is reverse psychology. Like, maybe the devil expects me to choose the easiest one, and if I do that, he's going to punish me? Because the two of skulls means that there's only going to be two undead. Three means three of the dusty bandits. Let's go for the strongest one. Hmm. Since that is whom you wish to fight, I think today I shall make you fight the others instead, just for fun. Ah, <laughs> so it is a good thing that I chose the hardest one. This should be easy, especially since I now have the shield. Cool, we got to fight on a boat. I have no idea why the hell I'm actually on a boat. I guess I got on a boat, like the devil. <laughs> it's like, here, get, get on this boat and go fight these evil demons. And then after I'm done, I just go back to shore. I don't know. I mean, there's no stairs further into a dungeon on a boat, is there? Anyway, excellent, the devil cries. You have passed my cutting test. Have some treasure. Perhaps next, perhaps next time our paths cross, I will kill you myself. Equipment. Ah, oh, another axe. Are you a woodsman turned warrior now? I know, right? Why, why do I keep getting axes? Are you sure that's the right approach? Bandit attack. Our bandits are displeased with your challenges. A group of bandits suddenly attacks. The King of Dust isn't happy about you killing his men. 
<laughs> two enemies. I think I can take it. Among the bodies, you find a scrap of parchment with a rough description of you, plus an offer of a reward from the King of Dust. There's a bounty on my head. Alright, at this point I have pretty much an obscene amount of food. 26. Well then, how will you deal with this? Ambush once again. Alright, let's do it. Few select these sorts of weapons because nobody ever anticipates being in peril. Such misplaced confidence is usually their downfall. It does 32 damage compared to my 27. That is very good, although it says this mace inflicts more damage the lower the health of the wielder is. Does that mean the more damage it inflicts is stacked on top of the 32, or is 32 the max? I don't know, but it sounds really good. I'm gonna equip it. I'm sure you're grateful for that. Okay, at this point, I think I could, like, feed an entire country with the amount of food that I have. Deeper towards our foe. Good. Now all you need to do is find and kill the Jack of Skulls, and we can progress. Goblins. Being stout and meek, goblins know they cannot use strength or fear to survive. They rely on more mischievous methods. They steal from you when you're asleep, and escape through magical portals. Scavengers of the Earth tell tales of the hidden vaults that these goblins hide their ill-gotten loot in. Their portals are made by dark magic, unkind to all but themselves. Win this and claim my token. One night, you awaken to find your belongings being rifled through by goblins. As soon as they notice you stirring, they run away with a piece of your equipment. They have also stolen some of your food and gold. You bastards. If I remember right, I have to catch them before they travel through their portals. I don't think they attack me, I think they just run away. Oh, never mind, they do attack me. I think this changed from how it was in early access, because I, I think this was very different before. Oh, maybe not. Give me my money back. I think I got it. Oh, what? You don't want to fight me anymore? Huh? Huh? <laughs> 
Did I actually get my food back? I feel like I didn't. I thought I had somewhere in the 30s, and now I have 28. Hmm. Take the token. It is yours. Go see what they have. Got a bunch of equipment I don't need. Let's go ahead and sell the mace and the axe. Perfect for bludgeoning the undead. You can always review your cards here. Yeah, so I have the explorer's helmet on at the moment. Basic shield, light armor, desperate measures as my weapon. Okay. Two on sale. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, it's the same stuff as before. No thanks. Don't need to buy food. Yeah, I'm good. Ah. The undead. Of all the players in the game, these are the most dangerous in the world, yet in no natural form. A wrongness. An error. Cheating. This tenacious undead is unusually difficult to lay to rest. In addition to sheer strength, the skeleton has the power to revive recently defeated skeletons in its close vicinity. Serving as captains to squads of lesser skeletons, these unholy abominations strike fear into the hearts of all warm-blooded folk. For until this fiend is defeated, their legions are, effectively, endless. A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. Bring it on, Jack of Skulls, let's do this. Shots from rifles cannot be deflected. You would do better to avoid them. Are you agile enough? Oh. Alright, he's reviving, gotta hit him. Come on, stop! Son of a bitch, stop reviving! Oh, I actually killed him. He's already dead. Holy hell, that was easy. I think this weapon is insane. Ah, well done. Well done indeed. But you have roused the dead in their dusty tombs, and even I cannot say what will come of it. Now our wager becomes more interesting. Will the tools you've earned suffice to address the challenges I pose? That is the question, is it not? The Devil's Choice I get? Oh, completed the Devil's Choice and I get the Devil's Wager. Eventually I feel like I'm just gonna be, like, sawing off my arms and giving them to the devil or something. Like, this is just gonna keep escalating and escalating, isn't it? So many new cool encounters. And equipment. I can't wait to check it out. Shall we deal again? Another round, 
and our game truly begins. Alright, let's go ahead and build my deck for the next encounter, and then I think I'll end the episode. The Queen of Dust. Curses. In combat, the player's movement speed is reduced by how much gold they possess. <laughs> Money bags. I don't actually know what that means, though. Curses. Does that mean that is the curse I'm going to have when I'm trying to defeat her, or what? I'm not quite sure. A bold woman, this one. She did not collapse when the Empire did. No, she took up arms, organized her people, and vowed that in a country where death had gathered, she would be the one dealing it. Alright, let's throw in a couple new things. Frostfang and... I've already found a couple helmets, so I think I need some more armor. Or maybe a new shield. Yeah, let's toss out one of the old shields. Let's throw in... Uh, consuming Shame, that sounds kinda cool. Need three more encounters. Let's throw in Devil's Wager. That sounds nice. Let's throw out the other Devil one. Where is it? There it is. Helpful Priest. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think I'm going to end this episode here. But uh, I think this first episode probably gives, a, gives you a pretty good idea on how this game flows and how the whole thing works. And frankly, I think it's really damn cool. It's, it's such an interesting mixture of deck building and kind of action RPG. It's, I think it strikes a perfect balance of having enough randomization and kind of dice rolls that it keeps things fresh and interesting, but it also requires a lot of skill, so it's not like you're just completely at the behest of random events. You know, you have a massive amount of control over how well you do. It's really cool, and there's all, the, all these cards so many different encounters. Like, I just feel like there's going to never be an end to the new stuff that I can encounter. Which is a very nice feeling. And it's also pretty damn good looking. And I love the kind of almost tactile feel to the, the cards. Just moving them around and hearing them hearing them move and stack and just, just the way the cards are treated is very very visual and very satisfying. It's really nice. Just flicking through them feels good. Alright. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we will take on the Queen of Dust.